welcome to Mental Illness Matters Radio. <laughs> we were chatting right before this came on. <laughs> so that's why we're laughing. <laughs> um, my name is Christy Hodges. Um, I am one of the hosts of this radio show, and we also have Miss Kat Atwell. Hello. Thank you for joining us, Kat, and or for being here, Kat. Uh, Mental Illness Matters Radio is where we tackle problems or situations or stories or headlines or whatever that has to do with mental health. And as you know, in our fine country, there's a lot of things we can talk about when it comes to mental health. And this week, we're going to talk about self-care. Ta-da! Everybody loves this topic. I'm lying. Yeah. Everybody hates it. <laughs> Yes. It's one of the worst topics ever because everybody is like self-care, schmelf care. Yeah, I self-care. I exercise once a day or something. But self-care is a total package, and it's taking the time out to actually do it. You have to put effort into it. I was not a firm believer in self-care until the last year. No, really? Yes. Oh, and, and that's why I was a hot mess for the, my first 36 years. Some people Perfect. would say I still am, but... <laughs> Anyway, Kat, tell us a little bit about yourself and your week. Well, my week. Self-care. Great. Uh, I've had a rather, rather um, roller coaster week. Uh, I, Monday was stressful, and then I went to bed, and it felt like my brain was being squeezed. Tuesday, best day in the entire world. Wednesday, meh. Thursday, Paralyzed with anxiety and depression. Friday, kind of okay, but went to bed having a panic attack. So, uh, perfect example of a week where more self-care would have been beneficial. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing okay right now, though. You? <laughs> I'm good. My week is way better than the week before, which was fighting depression and... Um, just overall feeling this cloud of doom hovering over me. And, you know, I expected this. So I just moved, um, and this is my new lovely apartment. Yay! I love I it. I like the backsplash. It's really nice. Thank you. I did it myself. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I moved recently, and... Um, I was talking with my supervisor a few weeks before the move, and she said, well, you're, you know, you're going to have to make sure to do a lot of self-care during the move because uh, change is a huge trigger for my mental illness. And, you know, in the back of my mind, I was like, yeah, you're right, but no, I'm not going to do that because it's a positive move, and I'm excited about the move, so I'm not going to need to do that. Yeah, okay. Should have and didn't, especially when it comes on the medication front. I was not as... Uh, diligent about taking my medication as I should have. And so, yeah, like clockwork, three weeks later, depression. Yeah. So the thing about mental illness is it doesn't have to always be something horrible happening to trigger your symptoms. This was a wonderful move. I'm excited. I love my life. And all of a sudden, I woke up last weekend with this. It, it was, it's, um, how can I put it? It's like, you see gray. You don't see anything, and you feel like I'm never going to feel excited about life again. Um, one of my little things is I love morning coffee. I cannot wait to drink coffee. And when I'm not excited about drinking coffee, I have to be really careful. Something's wrong. It's not just bad creamer. Something's wrong. Um, and so I kind of bounce back from that. Uh, with a lot of self-care. So, Kat, talk about self-care. Tell us what it is. Uh, well, <clears throat> I will also agree that very frequently uh, some of the ugliest uh, symptoms will appear when good things have happened, which is frustrating um, with, with mental illness in general. You just assume bad things happen, and then you're going to need to engage and that's not the case um, because mental illness doesn't have a particular path. Uh, Self-care for me means a whole lot of things. Um, I uh, rest, for sure, enough sleep. Um, it's uh, knowing when to say no. 
for me it's huge to say I can't focus at work I'm not being productive uh, my brain is going too fast or it is not going at all and I know why and I should go home uh, that's the hardest one for me um, sometimes it's spending some time by myself because I often when I get very stressed uh, I, I have a tendency like I mentioned with my week with going you know woo, just like this and on my good days I decide to commit to like 17 new projects and um, and so I have to watch myself from over committing even though everything I want to do sounds great I often have to kind of back up after I've already agreed to do this because sometimes I'm really impulsive and and have the self-care tools in place to say I did that when I was in a bad place I really want to help you and I can't and then I have to process the fact that I feel bad about what I did so um, you know, and then there are other little alternative treatments that you can do for yourself, but it's really listening to your mind, listening to your body, and taking both of them seriously. Well, I'm going to dig into the meat of this. Ready? Okay. Yes. I did a group on self-care this last week, and one of the examples I used, of course, is make sure you put the mask on first before you can help somebody else, and that's what self-care is. But I'm going to tell you, this is the reality of it. People who have mental illness, I was even telling this to someone, a lot of people who have mental illness feel like they're less than worthy. Okay? Let's just get it out there. Put it out there. That's how we feel. We feel like a lot of times we want to be superhuman to make up for the fact that we have a mental illness. Right. Because let's face it, when you have a mental illness, the stigma that comes on top of it is, you cannot be a productive human. You're not going to live a normal life. You're not going to have this. You're not going to have that. So all of us are like running around like our little legs, our little legs trying to, oh, let me do this. Let me do this. I want to show people that I'm okay because this horrible disorder um, is overshadowing everything. It might, might tell people that I'm less than worthy. So I think a lot of people engage in that kind of behavior for a long time before in after they get into recovery to try to show the world I'm still a good person and I still can do all these great things even though I have a mental illness. Is that right? No, because it's not accurate, but it is a view that a lot of us share. We're so terrified that people are going to, when people find out, oh, you've been hospitalized or you attempted suicide, we're so scared that people are going to say, bless her heart or poor thing. And so we want the world to show the world we can do everything and we can lift the world on top of our shoulders in order to compensate for this illness. Right. So I just wanted to put that out there because that's something that a lot of us struggle with. For sure. Uh, what, what do you think about that, Kat? Well, you made me think of the phrase, fake it till you make it. And, um, you know, I've heard that my whole life where it's like, well, if you're having a bad day, just smile and go about your business and um, and that might work for some people uh, I think living with a mental illness that that is detrimental because that means you're ignoring everything that you've learned that you need to do before getting yourself in a very destructive uh, or potentially dangerous place um, I, I also would say like you you were talking about when when a person is living with mental illness very often and I'm totally guilty of this uh, I feel like I need to overcompensate um, you know to do more to show you that despite having a mental illness I'm a superhero and uh, because I'm also like preemptively judging myself in a way that I think somebody that would stigmatize me would think that I would you know that engaging in self-care and prioritizing myself is indulgent or selfish or I'm feeling sorry for myself and uh, yeah it's gross it's all gross makes me feel gross what do you what do you think I mean are, are you along the same lines I'm assuming I'm a, a superhero and my superpower is rumination yes <laughs> uh -huh. yep I'm making you a cape now No, I get it. I think that the, the, the problem is, is that 
until you learn, until we all learn what our triggers are and, and like the combination of things and accept it and say, this is part of who I am. It's not a weakness. Um, then we'll continue in that cycle. Yeah. Over and over and over of relapse or relapse or hospitalization or this or this or this. And I think, okay, I'm just going to say it. I think it's an ego thing. I think I, it's a pride thing. Well, I think a lot of it too is, you know, my mental illness translates as a character flaw. And right. that's frustrating and, and stupid. <laughs> that's me telling myself I'm stupid and those of you who are thinking the same thing. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's that's, true. That's that, right. You know. Yeah. So <laughs> But it is. That's that's often how it will sift through your head and make you make me that much more determined to ignore everything that I'm thinking and just push myself harder and further away from the self care that I need. Right. Yeah. I didn't I didn't understand self care until I will say again, I'm going to give credit to my supervisor. I'm not going to say her name because she didn't give me permission. <laughs> uh, but she, and, until this last probably nine, ten months, um, in my job, if you don't take self-care, you're done. The end. I mean, because you're not only dealing with your own mental illness and symptoms, you're also working with people who have some very triggering symptoms, and also you're confronting all of the things in your own illness because you're, you're exposed to this all the time. Um, and to have a supervisor that models self-care, like I'm going to take a self-care day this week, by the way, and it's going to be a mental health day. You know, you think about that, I think about that 10 years ago, and I would have been like, oh, you know, that would make me weak, and that would make me look like I can't do my job. And now it's, no, and this this last week when I was feeling massively depressed, I, call, I, I didn't go back to work after lunch on Tuesday because... I'm not good to anybody else. I'm not good to myself. And what I'm doing is driving myself farther down a hole that I've been before, which I like to live in denial about, which is if you don't take care of your mental illness, just like you don't care about if you don't take care of your diabetes, you will falter. And I mean, you, the body cannot sustain if it's not being taken care of when you have diabetes. The mind cannot sustain if you're not being taken care of. So what are some types of self-care. It's different for everybody. It's different. Every, every single person is different. My self-care has nothing to do with anyone else's. Kat, take it away. Right. For instance, Chrissy runs. Yes, I do. I, do, I so don't. I really don't. I fall. That's not part of my self-care regimen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, sorry. By the way, <laughs> So off topic, your hair looks phenomenal today. Um, oh, thank you. I didn't blow it dry straight. I have naturally curly hair. Many of you who have known me way in, back in the day know I had really big hair. Um, this is my, I don't want to do anything with my hair look. So it was thank you. Thank you. Um, so self-care for myself. Uh, it is... Anywhere from knowing that I need to call my therapist and set up an appointment that hasn't already been set up. Like, for right now, I have meetings with my therapist about every three to four weeks, generally. You know, we'll, we'll schedule the next one while I'm at my current appointment. There are times, though, when I realize things aren't going well and I actually need to call him um, before that next appointment comes. That's a hard one. Because um, it is. It's humbling. Self-care is humbling. It makes you feel shame. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, other ones for me uh, involve, gosh, uh, oftentimes going outside. Uh, movement. Because when I get depressed, I, I will ooze into a couch and become one with the fabric. And I don't want to do anything. I pile blankets on myself. Um, and uh, so I have to get outside, and I've got, I mean, even if it's just like walking around my cul-de-sac once, any kind of movement is helpful. Um, eating regularly. Oftentimes, when, especially when I'm anxious and my stomach is like, oh, I'm going to screw with you real bad, uh, I avoid eating um, and drinking water. Uh, 
and right and recognize and you, it's not the same, but it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I just took a gulp of water. So so that, I have no water here. Um, but actually taking a time out and being like, I can't. I have to step away from this meeting. I I can't participate in whatever because I have to go get food. Uh, it seems insignificant, but it's not. Um, journaling for me is big deal that I suck at. I'm supposed to what we call vomit journal, where I'm supposed to write down all the stream of crap that's going on in my head that I Thanks. don't want anyone to know about. Thanks for using the, the, the V word. Huh? Yes. You're the oh right. My bad. The uh, yep. This oh. where everyone. I have a massive fear of throwing up. Thank you, cat exposure therapy. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Don't blame me. Blame my therapist. Uh, he coined it. Um, so, um, I mean, yeah, those are big ones. Another one for me that's that's just helpful is water. Being immersed in water uh, is very soothing to me. So, but that in particular, like a float tank. Yes, like a float tank. I love floating, and I'm not ashamed of it. Um, we can talk about that more. After Chrissy tells us about her self care. Well, I thought that after that I should do some exposure therapy here. So I'll just oh. keep that right there. I'm really proud of you. Expe <laughs> it's a big deal. <laughs> we'll just have that on my shoulder. I hate this word, everyone. I'm sweating. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> See, and she's embarrassed that. about this. I'm, I'm going to just point this out. Chrissy's embarrassed right now, and it's hard to not be embarrassed, but it's legitimate, and what she's doing right now is super brave. Not kidding. Keep talking. Someone got sick on one of the teams that I was on this yesterday at... <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> I am so okay. <laughs> this right. So, uh, uh, right, so somebody got sick on your team. <laughs> somebody got sick on one of the teams that I work at and I was but you know, like I mean I'll give you an example of what it's like to have O C D. So I go on the team, I'm like, Hey everybody and then we you know, I do a group, and the group was great. And then in the, right at the end of the group, somebody was like, oh, yeah, and I feel so sorry for so-and-so. And I said, why? And they said, oh, because, you know, they took their meds and then barfed everywhere. And I was like, <gasps> and all of a sudden the room's like, <sighs> and I'm sitting here like, okay, did I get near this person? Did I breathe this person's air? Did I touch this person? Did these people touch this person? Do I need to worry about the contact? And I was like, <laughs> so um, self-care for me in that moment, which is the opposite of what I should have done, um, according to ERP standards, was I left the unit, even though <laughs> it was only noon. <laughs> and I was like, bye-bye, see ya. So let's hope all that clears out this weekend or I won't be back on the unit again until Monday um, or until after later on this week. So anyway, oh, side note. Um, so anyway, I think that the thing is, is that about self-care that's so hard is, um, you know, Kat just gave you a ton of different examples. And I have this, you know, a lot since I like running. I like running. I have to sleep well. But interestingly enough, it's hard for me to fall asleep with OCD. You always want to be in control of things. Um, and so falling asleep can be hard sometimes. Using the vomit example, um, like it's very hard to close your eyes and, and allow yourself to go to sleep because that means you're at a loss of control. You can't control your surroundings. What if I wake up sick? Um, and so falling asleep is actually really difficult when you have anxiety about getting sick or anxiety about other things. Um, and so sleeping a lot, sleeping is a huge one for me. However, it's hard to. I want to stay up. I want to stay up until I'm so tired that I can't fight it anymore. Um, and then that doesn't serve me well later. Um, so, and um, eating right, of course, I don't have any issues with that. Um, 
and I really don't because of my <laughs> vomit fear. I'm really, um, <laughs> I'm really good about eating things that are fresh and not that are will hopefully not make me sick. Um, and then spending time by myself, but also socializing with people because I am an extrovert, but I am an introvert after work. I get that a makes you an ambivert, by the way. Not kidding. Is it? Ambivert. I love it. Now I know what I am. Yes. I'm an ambivert. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to force myself to hang out with people, but I also have to sometimes force myself to spend time alone when I usually play Super Mario Brothers. So what is it about self-care that we hate? Why is it hard to take the next step? Um, because something triggered me um, thinking about this when Kat was talking. When you're feeling like crap, you get underneath the covers. You know, you want to cover up. Anxiety is a very, when you're experiencing it, you want to get small and you want to get dark and you don't want to. down. Move. Yeah. You, you just want to like, please let it pass. Please let it pass. Please let it pass. Um, so the first step to self-care is horrible when you're in that position. It's horrible because you think nothing's going to help. You think I could pour a glass of wine and it won't help. Um, and it, sometimes it won't just if that's part of your self care, you know, sometimes it won't, you know, smoking a joint sometimes isn't going to help when you're in that position, but it's important to just say, take the first step. I plan, if I'm depressed, I plan 10 minutes at a time in the next 10 minutes. I need to make sure to get up and walk into the kitchen and make something to eat. Or I need to get up and walk and breathe some fresh air. Um, and that's okay. And it seems stupid. And I was talking to someone yesterday who was like, this is so stupid. The things I'm afraid of are so stupid. And everybody else is so successful. And I can't even take a shower. And I was like, that's not stupid. Because that's your fear. That's your anxiety. Um, and so it's important to remember that, no, it's important to drop your effing ego and take care of yourself because I hate to say it a lot of times your illness is stronger than you are and so if you're not taking care of yourself you will be overpowered by it I know right. that very harsh but it's it's the reality and we live it over and over and over it's the stupid cycle that we do to ourselves over and over and over until you finally go I'm fucking sick of feeling like this I'm fucking tired of crashing every year and a half or every six months or every whatever just right. take care of yourself already who fucking cares that you have a mental illness that's it <laughs> mic drop uh <laughs> sorry uh, no you're good i i was i was thinking about how for me oftentimes if i'm ignoring the whole concept of self-care i will go into extreme avoidant mode with my anxiety or my depression you know, it's one of those, if I can't see it, it can't see me, or I'll try to argue with it, um, which is so exhausting. Um, and, and one of the reasons I had to go home early on whatever day that was, that was Thursday. I actually had to leave work because I had spent hours convincing myself to get over it instead of just allowing the horribly disgusting, uncomfortable, irrational fear feeling to just sit with me, because that's what yeah. I mean, that's what I need to do is allow it to sit with me, remind myself, look at you haven't died. Uh, you know, the whole world hasn't collapsed around you. Yes, you are uncomfortable, but you're going to be so much more uncomfortable if you sit here and try to reason with the sick part of your brain. Right. Because uh, no. you have to right do that much more self care later. Because you, you've used up so much adrenaline doing what you weren't supposed to do in the first place. Right. Yeah. So, so what is your self-care? You know, and, and, and what's keeping you from, I mean, the, probably the best question is, what is keeping you from putting yourself first when it comes to your mental illness? Um, you know, if we had to run down the reasons, you know, let, Kat, let's use our own experience in sure. our illnesses to, to try to run down the reasons of why people won't. Why um, it's a back burner? Okay. 
Um, we'll just go back and forth. Uh, kids. Oh. Um, pride. Work. Ego. Don't want to make other people uncomfortable. Uh, feeling shame for having a mental illness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Feeling like uh, defeated. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, fear that people will think you're weak. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, agreeing with those people that you are weak because you have to do so. Mm -hmm. Um thinking that people will be actually ashamed of you. So you will feel shame, but the other reason is if I do this, people will be ashamed of me, which they very well may be. Screw them. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Um, another one for me is is having to break commitments with others uh, in order to partake in self-care. So that would, I'm, I'm just going to, Take it a step further, seeming unreal that you are unreliable because of your mental illness. Oh, definitely, that's so huge. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, like the media, yeah, that one's hard. the media portrays it that way. They say the people who have mental illness are unreliable. You can't count on them, and so it's you know why would we try to put that? Why would we try to put our self care first? I'm sorry, I can't go out tonight because I'm really feeling anxious. You know, so people might be like, oh, I read that stat on CNBC the other day or whatever that mentally ill people are disorganized and can't be relied on. So, yeah. So. That's true. Or you see it on television. If you see a person who is, who is depressed, inevitably, you are not going to come into a clean home based on the TV. You're going to find someone living in it. Um, you know, who's like, you know, somehow has no furniture all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. uh, can you remember, oh, what was that movie with Demi Moore when, when uh, oh, God. Uh, Demi Moore and Rob Lowe and... and um, Ghost. Ugh. No, back further. <laughs> uh, what else is she? I want to say Chariot Fire, and that's so wrong. It's, it's, like, it's like Breakfast Club, but it's not. That's the only movie Hello. I can think of with Demi Moore right now. Go! I'm going to let you guys <laughs> come back to me. I see that someone's joined us! Yay! <laughs> Hi! Allison Dodson! Come on in! Introduce yourself! Hi! Can you hear me okay? Yes! Okay, great. I'm Allison Dodson, as you just said. Um, what do I need to say? I have OCD. <laughs> yep, that's it. We're good. <laughs> You're in the club now. <laughs> How's it going? Good. We were well. We were talking about. We were going back and forth talking about reasons why people will not engage in self care, and then we we. I went off on a tangent, of course, as usual, and then Cat's trying to recall a movie, which I'm assuming you're googling now. And um, yeah, it's Saint Elmo's Fire. Saint Elmo's what? Fire. Oh. Saint Elmo's Fire. Okay, what was the yeah. point? Revisit. It was. It was just the image of Demi Moore when she's very depressed is sitting in a completely empty apartment with like a sock here and a bra there, and she's <laughs> curled up into a ball. And I'm like, yeah, because that's what everybody's sadness looks like. So anyway, that's all it was, and I had to Google it. <laughs> Isn't the room? Also, like, curtains blowing in, and, like, Emilio Estevez has to come save her or something. Yes. Yeah, they have to climb up, like, the fire escape to get in and save her. Yeah. <laughs> Orange curtains, billowy curtains. Yep. Yes. <laughs> the moral of the story is all you have to do is be depressed, and Emilio Estevez will come up and save you. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Yep, I'm okay with that. <laughs> The next topic of conversation on Mental Illness Matters Radio is going to be mental illness in the media. So we should oh. get that for three hours long. Yep. <laughs> All right, Allison, bring it to the table. What do you do for self-care? It's a good question, and I don't know. I feel like a lot of people might 
identify with this. I do self-care, and then I feel guilty about doing self-care wow. because I, I need to be productive, and I can't just do something for myself. Because um, I was just telling a friend recently, I'm like, oh, lately, all I've been doing is I go to bed at night, and I listen to a podcast until I fall asleep. And she was like, that sounds great. Like, what's, what's wrong with that? And I'm like, but I'm not doing anything. Like, I'm not writing. I'm not reading a book to review. I'm not doing all these different things because um, I have my toe dipped in so many different things because um, I'm the president of OCD Twin Cities. I wrote a book. I have a blog. Um, I like to volunteer with other places. And I do it all because I love it, but I also do it all because I'm like, I can't say no. That's, that's an opportunity I can't pass up. And then it gets to be too much, and then I feel guilty that it's too much. And if I'm not doing something like every minute of the day that, you know, benefits someone else, I feel guilty. Um, but I know it's good for me. So I guess that is one thing I've been doing lately is I've, like, probably 10 years too late been turned on to podcasts. Hi, podcasts are a thing. <laughs> Me too, in the past six months. You're not alone. <laughs> I just, I was like, what is a podcast? That sounds, I don't get that. And then I got an iPhone, and I was like, oh, okay. So I'm behind on lots of things. Um, so I love doing that. Um, I just go to bed maybe like an hour before I normally would and turn out the lights, pick a podcast that I want to listen to, um, maybe play games on my phone at the same time. But I also nap when I want to nap, which is, you know, another thing that's, like, so good for you, but then makes you feel so guilty if you haven't done anything else. So I think it has to be a balance. That's what I found. If all I do all weekend is relax, on Monday I'm like, why did I waste my weekend? I did nothing. So I kind of need to do productive things. Um, I don't know, wash the dishes, and that makes me feel good. Like, I've done something. I'm not just, like, a blob laying around the house. Um, as well as just chilling out, hanging out with my dogs and my husband and everything. I'm going to say, you just brought us full circle. Like, we, at the, at the very beginning of this, we were just talking, we were just talking about that. Like, how people with mental illness feel the need to have to do things and be yep. effective to, like, overcompensate for having a mental illness. Mm hmm <laughs> Or even, like, wasted time, you know? Like, I had OCD for so long, I didn't know it. And now it's like, hey, I'm medicated. I can do stuff. Um, I have a full-time job. All these things that like were so hard before. So it's also kind of like I'm trying to get my life on track in a, you know, in a different way. Well, I'm like, it's like you're trying to make up for lost time. What? You're what? Say it again. Oh, I just said it's like you're trying to make up for lost time. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Well, and one of the things that I actually was talking to a client yesterday about was the the difference between when you get your mental illness under control versus the time that you did not have it under control. Like, all of my time was spent ruminating right. <laughs> and avoiding. <laughs> and so then when it's under control, you're like, oh, my God, what do I do? What, yeah. I don't <laughs> I don't have anything to do because I'm not caught in my head. Right. Yeah, all of a sudden, like, your time isn't taken up with something. And I, I think that does happen is that people, once they get on the recovery path, they're actually like, I don't know what to do with myself because I was doing compulsion so much. Yeah. I'm sure that that's the same with your diagnosis, Kat, right? Like, once you get shit under control, like... Beforehand, you were just too preoccupied with staying above water. That's a good way to put it. Like, you're so right. preoccupied with just surviving the illness that once you have it under control, it's like, oh, my God. Do I, do I, am I a normal person now? Do I have to be a normal person now? That's something I've struggled with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, well, I'm definitely would, not normal. <laughs> <laughs> Owning it. Um, I, w I was going to say there are times it went in recovery that, like, uh, Allison, you made me think of this, when you have a whole weekend relaxing and then you're like, oh, shit, there was so much I could have done. I think there's a difference between relaxing for the hell of relaxing and relaxing for the sake of self-care. 
Because yes. if I'm not aware of it, and then I get pissed off. I'm like, ah, I didn't go all in, and now I'm mad at myself because I didn't, you know. And I don't know how that applies to any of the conversation that led here. <laughs> but, but that's that's one of those things where I'm like, ah, oh, I laid about all week, but I didn't do it on purpose. And, um, right. Cause, like, it's not what you plan to do. It wasn't right. like, this weekend, I'm just going to, like, do things for myself. I'm going to relax. It's like, for me, I'll have a list of things. Mm-hmm. And when then I, when I don't accomplish the list, so yeah, I think you're right. It needs to be mindful self care. It can't just be like, I fell asleep on the couch, and six hours later, my husband's like, "Hey, want dinner?" Yes. <laughs> Does that happen? Exactly. <laughs> I think I'm glad you brought up the guilt thing um, because we're three people that are advocates for mental health and mental illness, and I think this is one thing. And probably a topic that should be explored more, or could be blogged about. I mean. Um, is feeling that, you know, it, when you're in the advocacy world, it's it's a, okay, well, I need to put a blog out this week, or I need to do a podcast this week, or I need to, you know, like with my mental illnesses and a trend thing, I'm like, I need to come up with something new and fun this week. Um, and when you don't do it, then all of a sudden you're like, oh, my God, I'm letting people down, or oh, my God, then that must mean then I'm not really good at this, or people aren't going to take me seriously, and da, 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 da. And what I, interestingly enough, I, um took July off of any advocacy other than podcasts um, because I, 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 you know, when you're not creative, your blogs suck. When you, you know, like, when you're not in a creative space, it sucks. And, yeah. and I knew, like, a, a, a month after I moved, I was going to be a hot mess. And so I took July off, and I'm still struggling with the guilt, Allison. I'm still struggling with, you haven't blogged in three weeks. So you are going to be inevitable. You know, you're going to be. You're not going to be relevant. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I like in my mind. And, and then I think, why do you even think you're that important? You're not that important, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> you know. So it's like this thing in my head that's like, you're not really that important, Chrissy. I know, but it, I, but I could be blogging. What if it reached somebody? You're not really that important. It's like this battle that goes on in yeah. my head over and over. And I think that in advocacy, that's really where we need to be careful. And, and really where it cannot be, you're not competing with yourself. And you're not competing with other advocates either. You just, mm-hmm. like, it's probably more admir- admirable to say, I can't do it this month. And I can't, yeah. I can't oh, figure it out. Definitely. And I think there is a lot of advocate burnout. And, I mean, not just in our field, um, you know, just any person who's dedicating their time or their life to helping other people, you get to the point where you're not, carving out that time for yourself, that you're always worried about someone else, and, oh, I haven't called that person back yet. I feel so guilty. Um, yes. You're right. Like, what if this is the phone call this person needs? And, you know, it's a lot of pressure on yourself, um, and you've put yourself kind of in that position. It's not like you haven't told people, yeah, email me, give me a call or whatever. I've done that. Um, but then it gets to a point where I'm like, I'm overwhelmed, and I have to remind myself that I have a mental illness, too. Um, and I'm an introvert, so I need to be at home and be quiet and have all those things to recharge, and then I don't feel like I'm as good for someone else if I'm not doing that for myself. Yeah. But, yeah, I think you're. it's good, like you said, to make a conscious effort to, to unplug or to be like, I'm just not going to do it this month. So it's it's not that you're disappointing anyone or even yourself. You're like, no, I, I planned on this. This is yeah. what I planned all along was not to do. All that well, stuff. I have the guilt about it. Yeah. <laughs> is a perfect yeah, example. Go ahead, Allison. Oh, I don't know about you guys, but um, when I commit to things too, if I overcommit, then I get really overwhelmed and I do nothing. So it's like, well, if I don't have time tonight to read three chapters to make, you know, toward this book I'm going to review then I'm just not going to do anything, and I play Candy Crush all night. And then it's like, why did I do that? <laughs> right? You it's know, it's, it's all or nothing. It's black and white. It's for me, I think it's a pretty OCD thing. I don't know. I, and maybe with other mental illnesses too, anxiety, I'm not sure. But it's like, no, you can just do a little bit. You can, you know, you can do nothing, or you can just do a little bit each night or when you have a chance, and then you're making progress, it's okay. I've always been like that, though. I mean, 
with exercise, with food, with, you know, like writing a book or whatever, I've always been like, well, tonight I didn't work out, so I'm never going to again. <laughs> I was candy crushing all night. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, too, when you get to a point where you've committed or, you know, made packs with yourself about doing a zillion things, one of the things that I've noticed about myself is, you know, I get overwhelmed, I decide I'm not going to do one of them, and then it becomes, well, if I'm not going to do one of them, I'm going to give up on everything. <laughs> Why yeah. give up on one when I can't fail everybody and myself universally? Yeah. <laughs> I, I get it. So, okay, I just want you all to know I'm writing things down as we're talking. And look, right here it says, Allison Dodson. You are. Candy crushing all night. Um, and so <laughs> this is going to be the topic of a podcast we're going to do. Advocacy guilt. Okay? Yes. <laughs> Of us that are doing advocacy are we have other jobs. It, it's you know we you know, we may make money off of our advocacy and that's fine. But but even if you're making a living off of your advocacy, the guilt is going to be there. Mm -hmm. So we need to do like a long podcast and have different advocates come on and talk about this and let's find some solutions for people that are going into this so they don't have to feel like they're alone. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Definitely. Oh, definitely. I mean, I need it myself, so <laughs> if I can just listen. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, be participating. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, they're such an important topic. It's burnout, and that, because I have heard other advocates say, like, they either completely give up. They're like, you know, I know one woman who is like, I'm just not going to answer emails anymore. She put a note out on her blog. From here on out, I'm not answering any emails because she was getting so many, um, and that was good for her. But it's it's hard to get to that point, and I you know I don't want to get to that point myself. Like I want it to be like nope, I'm gonna you know, but I have to set boundaries. So you can like just with, add like the disclaimer at the end of the blog. We'll get back to you within the next year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I'm thinking for OCD Twin Cities. Because we, you know, being an affiliate of the International OCD Foundation, like the bare minimum is you have a, a phone number and an email address for people to contact you. Yes. And that's great. But I have a full time job, so I'm not necessarily going to call the person back that day. And I think I'm like, I need to put a, a note on our website that's like, call us. This is an all volunteer organization. You know, expect to hear back in X amount of time or whatever. Yeah. I don't think expectations is terrible at all, for what it's worth. I, you know, you see those all the time, but for whatever reason, when we want to do it to ourselves, I think this is another one of those where it's like, I can't let them know that I can't handle all the things right now. Yeah. Right. It's and and right. other in in other professions, or if it was a business organization or something, it would be deemed professional. But for right. us, it would be like, oh, well, she may, she just must not be able to handle it because of her. Yeah, or you're making excuses. <laughs> right. Yeah, like you're making an excuse like, oh, I have so much to do. And it's like, well, no. I mean, I do have a lot to do. It's not an excuse. It's just like the reality of it. Wow. Okay. Well, so okay. what were you guys – go on. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to ask, Allison? Oh, I was going to ask what you guys do for self-care, and I'm sorry if that would, if that makes this post or this thing repetitive, then feel free to not answer my question. Well, no, no, I think, you know, let's, um, Kat, I wanted to um, put it to you, like, Kat is the prime example right now of somebody who, um, and Allison, you probably don't know this, but Kat just put on This Is My Brave, Ignite Denver, oh, okay. and her family came and visited last last weekend. So all of these <laughs> all of these things happened in the span of like two months. Yeah. So, wow. I handled it so well. I'm doing great. <laughs> And I mean, I think that along with self-care, and Kat and I have talked about that this week, is 
expecting things uh, when, when we have when, when we're dealing with a lot in, on our plate which you know we think oh as humans we're so smart and intelligent we should be able to handle all this stuff you know and, and be tough and and we can do it um, and maybe you'll just be a little tired afterwards but the thing is is that with mental illness like not that everything is an effort but but you know things can affect you especially these huge events and so I was you know we, Kat and I were back and forth this last week and and I was saying you should expect to feel depressed you should mm -hmm. expect to feel anxious you should expect all this yeah. you know and 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 I know that was hard for you, and I know it's hard for me when people say, oh, well, you're moving. You should expect to feel this way. I'm like, no, I shouldn't. I'm stronger than that. Well, right. whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, it's I've just got momentum, and I can do all the things. And, um, like, I remember the other night, I'm really sorry, Mom, if you're watching this. And it's her birthday. Happy birthday, Mom. Uh but one of the things that my husband said to me, so I get really stressed out when my family comes in town. Suddenly it's, I have to put on, like, the perfect Catherine picture. My house needs to be perfect. I should immediately lose 30 pounds. My child is perfect. Let me cook you all the vegan food. I will never eat. <laughs> and on and on and on. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> Obviously, I might accomplish like two percent of that because that's not who I am. But uh, no, no, I just and then I try to fake cat. Oh, good. Oh, okay, super. Okay. So, <laughs> so and and everybody knows, family included, that I am a shit face. I mean, of stress when they come. But I'm like, I am so okay right now, <laughs> and. Uh, the other night, my husband said, "Oh yeah, your mom actually pulled me aside and and told me she knows she knows how much it stresses you out to see them." And I lost my shit. <laughs> I'm like, I, I mean, really, it was like sobbing, and it's ten at night, and I'm like, oh, I can't. I, uh, they aren't supposed to know, and um, you know, and I'm making light of it, but. It's significant. You think you're doing everything and nobody's noticing mm -hmm. because you've tried so hard that when they, that, and, uh, you know, my second thought was, why are you telling me this? I'm like, I never needed to know that she said this to you. Um, but, you know, accepting, okay, other people see that I'm, I'm probably not doing the healthiest thing for myself, uh, you know. Not to say that I don't want to see my family, but yeah, it's overwhelming, and doing all those shows is overwhelming. I mean, we, uh, and I, I, before you came on, Alice, and I was saying a lot of times, too, it's not like some sort of um, crisis or horrible thing happens for you to get into a self-destructive place. All of the things that have happened to me since May, amazing show, another amazing show. Got to see my family, whom I love. Um, you know, all of these are good things. Had some kick-ass opportunities come. Yeah. And then it just sneaks up on you. It's like, wham! And, and yeah. And then the my... Is that isn't just that you're, that you're tired. It's just that people are... We are susceptible to symptoms. And yeah. that's what's hard to accept, you know, because it's this weird balance of we shouldn't be doing this now. We've outgrown this. or We've learned how to manage this. Yeah, I let me incorporate this too, because and I might have said this in another one of our our shows, but um, there are times when I'm particularly unhealthy and sick that I will I will actually be in my therapist's office and I will get pissed at him and say I have been coming here for close to a decade and every time I come you tell me the same things and you remind me I have to do my self care yet I'm still fucking showing up because. I somehow haven't figured out that what you mean is serious. And, oh, it's maddening. Because, you know, beating yourself up about it is the best way to treat yourself. <laughs> but it is. It does get frustrating. <laughs> not, it seems, not the best self-care so technique. Simple. Number 10, right. not to I, be, don't, not, no self-care. Don't beat yourself up. <laughs> right. Which is, which is so easy Especially when you get to accuse someone else of it. 
You're telling me too much about healthcare. Why am I paying you to tell me the same thing? Because it has He's like, it you happened. don't have to. Right. <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> for the same reason I still pay for a gym I don't attend. That's why. <laughs> Well, I think the thing is, is that you know the bottom line is things like family visits are hard. I they mean, are. I don't know. There are some you know unicorns out there who love it when their family visits and everything goes smoothly, and afterwards they feel angelic. I don't. I mean, okay, but I, don't know. I think family visits in general are you know when when someone has a family visit or something happens that it's like oh yeah oh that's stressful. But for us, it's Oh my God! But we have to make sure everything is perfect because we want to make sure everyone knows that we're okay and that we're not sick and that we're not that this isn't happening. And then they don't have to leave worried. Blah 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 blah. I don't know where that comes from. Where does that come? From? <laughs> I hope that was rhetorical because I don't know. <laughs> Allison, help! I honestly and okay. So I was just thinking of an old psychology term. Well, I mean. It's not old, but, you know, like, Psychology 101, you stress, like, the stress, E-U-S-T-R-E-S-S, -S, instead of distress, it's the stress that you feel even when all good things are happening. Ah, I'm writing this down. So, like, it could be like, I'm getting married, I got a new job. Right yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, so it's, I think, like, if you remember that you can feel stressed even when good things are happening, I think that can alleviate the guilt too. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just hard. Like, I love my family, but it's hard to have someone disrupt your routine. Your routine. Even if it's in all good ways. Like, we're going out yeah. to eat, it's fun, da 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 da. It's still like, but I'm used to laying on the couch for a little while and, you know, taking a bath and doing all these things that you can't do when you're sharing a bathroom with other people. And, Making sure that they're they're comfortable in your terrible guest bed, and, you know, stuff like that. So basically, self care goes down the toilet when family's there. <laughs> so you have to prioritize <laughs> self care when you're when you're dealing with a stressful situation like that, and that makes you feel guilty. It makes you feel bad because you should think, well, everybody else says this, normal people do this. You know, why can't I do it? Mm -hmm. Well, here's here's an interesting story from this week. So the family was all gone by Monday. Tuesday, I had preemptively planned as a day off for recovery. But, Allison, you made me think of this. So, like, come Monday night, I'm like, I, I can't handle another day without my routine. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was actually a healthier decision to go into work simply mm -hmm. because I needed that familiarity. Um, it's, it's weird when self-care is, you know falling back into a routine. But yeah, it's it's going back to what you're comfortable with and honoring that, that part of yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, so, speaking of um, things that are great that happen but can be detrimental to your mental illness and, and when self-care is needed, is Allison and I are headed to the International OCD Foundation um, annual conference this week. It's going to be in Chicago. Yay! next weekend and um, we will be doing a panel chat on um, taboo thoughts, um, taboo OCD thoughts which Allison and I both um, have had experience with so yay! Saturday it's going to be awesome but I think let's touch on this really quick before we wrap up. Allison I am going to the conference and have been for the, nat for the last three years but this year just if you hear anything weird it's because my French Bulldog just came out of the room and he's snorting like crazy behind me so just so you know, if you hear anything, that's him. Um, it's not code for Chrissy has gas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. It's a dog. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> I've been at this conference for the last few years, and last year when, you know, it was great to see everybody, it was fun, and I crashed like a mofo when I got home. I mm -hmm. mean, like was not expecting to crash the way that I did. But, you know, being around, like, a thousand anxious people, I mean, just to be honest, like, and talking about OCD and bringing mental illness to the forefront and just being on for three days straight and then coming home, I crashed so horribly that I was like, okay, 
this year, I'm going to go. I'm going to attend on Saturday, and the rest of the time, I'm going to be like in Chicago eating good food and drinking wine and spending time in my hotel room. So, um, you know, what are your thoughts on that, Allison? Well, I think that's great. Um, I am doing the opposite. I am like overcommitting. <laughs> I'm going to blog again for them. Um, but I'm. I'm not there yet where I feel like I can't handle all of it, um, but I will say that I've been there twice, and each time when I get home, I'm so blue. I'm just like back to my normal life where I work at a marketing agency, and it doesn't help anyone, and no one here like knows what OCD is, because you're, and it's only four days out of your life where you're like around other people who totally get you, but it's just like, it's great. Um, yeah, so I don't. I'm. I get anxious every time. I'm nervous. Um, I'm nervous. I'm not going to be able to meet all my obligations that I suddenly have, like the week before. But I think, yeah, I think what you're doing is great, and you're not the only person. I know a couple people who I'm like, hey, are you going? And they're like, nope, totally burned me out. You know, it was great to see people, but I can't. I can't keep doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm glad to see everybody and I'm excited about it. It's just. I mean, not travel, four days. Travel yeah. is tough for me anyway. It's, yep. And I mean, I guess you know, I can kind of end my portion on like the self care piece is knowing what, you know, for me, knowing what it is that's going to wreck me. And I, I guess sometimes it just seems like where everybody else would be like, oh, but travel's so great. What's wrong with you? Well, what's wrong with me is that I have OCD and a mental illness. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and I'm a homebody, and that makes me feel yeah. That's where I feel the best and the most comfortable. And if, and I think that's something that I've had to really come to terms with. Of, you know, I don't like traveling. I don't like getting on a plane. I don't mm -hmm. like you know this or that. I tried to like it for a long time, and it just made me sicker. So yeah, yeah. So it's, I guess it's stressful. I mean, it's only recently that I don't get, like, horrific stomach aches every time I go somewhere. I mean, I have never in completely enjoyed a, a vacation. Mm -hmm. um, I might be able to now that I've been medicated for a while, but, like, I've been to London, I've been to Paris, I've been, you know, and it's just, like, feeling sick, I don't want to be doing anything, I would rather just lie down in the hotel room, which is a total waste. Uh, yeah. yeah. So we'll see... Well, I think what you're doing is good. It'll be fun to see you, and it'll be fun to do our panel. I can't believe we're going to be together yes. a week from right now. I know. Crazy. Um, well, and I was going to say, too, the fact that we're doing a panel, so it's you and me and a, and a man named Sean, I feel so much less stressed about, like, carrying a presentation yeah. or, like, here's my <laughs> portion where I'm going to stand up there by myself. So... I feel kind of cool and easy about it. I know. For now. It's, it's going to be awesome. So if any of you are listening and you want to come to the panel, um, if you're at the OCD convention next week, um, it's at, is it 1.30, Allison? 1.45, I think. Okay. See, I don't even know the deal. Look, this is how I am. It, I'll but be it's like, in the book. Okay. It's in the I'm conference. Allison at like 12 o'clock. I'm like, are we supposed to speak? Where are we supposed to speak at? Where are we supposed to go? And then she's going to be like, damn it, she's late. It was yesterday. <laughs> So yeah, 145 at the OCD conference on Saturday. If you're going to be there, please come see us. And then, um, you know, we'll be around all day. Um, let's hang out. The keynote speech is right after that, so I'm sure we'll be heading that way. And let's party it up, man. Woo! <laughs> so I'd like to end today with us. Um, I've got a whole list of things we're going to be talking about in the next month or so. Um, but I'd like to end today um, not necessarily giving some advice about self-care, I guess, but just... What did you learn today? What did you? What do you think about the discussion? And what, you know, what can you tell people about the importance of self care? I learned I'm not alone. That like, <laughs> you know, I feel like everything I said, you were both like, yes, 100%. Um, so it seems like it's it's something we all need to do. It's like it's something we need to focus on more and be more mindful about. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Your Minnesota yeah. accent just came out, by the way. 
Nice. <laughs> Mine <Ooh>. called me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, mine it's it's similar. It's it's being mindful of your self care, and not yeah. He walked in, um, and and thoroughly just if you're if you're gonna engage in self care, then do it. Don't yeah. feel bad about it. Celebrate the fact that you have the courage and the power to do it, and and fuck everything else because. <laughs> you, you have to come first. Your mask goes on first, Chrissy. I'm writing that down. That's the okay. self-care <laughs> mantra. Okay. <laughs> um, so, if you don't take anything away from this, just take that away. <laughs> <laughs> self-care mantra. <laughs> I like it. Wise <laughs> For me, I just concur with both of you. I'm so glad to get it out in the open. I think that the fact that we all feel this way, especially about the advocacy piece, I'm really wanting us to do a show about that because I think, oh my God, of all people that need each other's support, it's the advocates for the things that we're doing so that we can try to reduce the guilt and maybe help support each other in that. So God, I'm so glad other people feel that way because I thought that I was the only one that wasn't, you know, that was always feeling so guilty. So um, two quick things really quick before we end. Um, number one, I wanted to do the mental health win of the week. And yes, I'm sorry. This is so selfish, but it's going to be about me. Um, <laughs> but I'm super excited this week um, to have been selected for the government um, advisory board for Colorado standards and regulations for the treatment of mental health. Yay! I submitted this application huge. a while back and it, it was a long selection process and I was like, they're not going to choose me, like whatever. But they did and I was on, I went to the first board meeting and um, from what I can hear, I don't think there's any other peers um, that are representing our state. So, yes! I mean, Yay! I just, be the voice for all of us and all the people that I work with and hopefully a peer's perspective will help as we move forward because Colorado, oh, we need some help. Colorado needs some help. <laughs> it's true. Well, what kind of program would it be without someone with mental illness weighing in on it? I mean, that's it would be infuriating if no one else was, so that's that's amazing. That would be the programs we have had before, which makes us 49th in the nation <laughs> for mental health. That's probably why. Wow. I know. And so I'm hoping... Under your direction, you will become 48th. I just know. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> Aim high. <laughs> you can do it. Maybe. <laughs> All right, so if you like what you've heard on this or any of the other shows for Mental Illness Matters, please consider being a donor to the show. This is this show is completely listener-supported. Remember, your money goes towards um, education, information, pe peers' perspectives, people's um, lived experience um, that's going to help other people feel less alone. You can go to www.patreon.com slash the stigma of mental illness, um, and you can donate anything from, like, Fifty cents, a dollar, what, twenty dollars a show, um, whatever. Um, dollars, it's fine. <laughs> so whatever you can, um, just to keep us up and running, and just to keep this kind of information coming. So if you want to be part of this huge movement we're in, please visit www.patreon, p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash the stigma of mental illness matters radio. Also, you can see a video there of a little bit more about me and Kat and I are going to try to do a video soon um, to give some more information about both of us and our vision for the show. Um, right. Allison, thank you for being here. Um, for I, me. I expect that you'll be coming on many, many, many more times to lend. I hope so. So thank you for that. I look forward to seeing you next weekend at the See International Foundation. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Kat, thank you for being here as usual. You are awesome. Your insight and humor is always a pleasure. Oh. 
Thanks. I'm jealous that I'm not going to be in Chicago with you guys. So have fun. Travel safely. You can come sit on the panel with us. You don't have I to. Totally talk to you. would, except I'd be an imposter. So. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Kat. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> I support you. <laughs> <laughs> So I think the bottom line of this show and something that you can take away is please make self-care a priority. Please don't feel guilty. If you do, you're not alone. But we really need to work harder to make it a priority to take care of ourselves first. You do not have to feel guilty just because you have a mental illness. Thank yep. you for joining us today. Uh, you've been listening to Mental Illness Matters Radio um, with Kat Atwell, myself, and Allison Dotson. And we will look forward to seeing you next time at Mental Illness Matters Radio where we are changing the way people view mental illness one personal story at a time. Bye. <laughs>